Hi everyone, Larry Satchwell here, back in the shop again today. After my other roosting box failed, I don't want to give up on providing a safe haven for birds in the, the winter. This time, I'm going to use the plans from Bird Friendly Nest Boxes and Feeders by uh, Paul Missell. Paul, I apologize if I ruined your name. I'm going to leave the uh, ISBN number and the uh, resource in the description if you'd like to make this box. He's laid out the directions beautifully, laid out uh, the cut list and everything. But I've had this lumber left over from Dana's picnic table. So I've got enough here, and I made sure I did before I got started, to cut all the pieces out. And I've done this kind of a project before out of scraps. And if I don't label them, I'm sure enough going to cut the wrong piece too short. So I've made sure that I've got everything I need, and I'll get started. I have the sides and the back cut out to size. The back only required two through quarter inch holes there. Give them a start. It's three inches in and three quarters of an inch up. So you can mount it from the top and the bottom. The sides have a lot of markings to make. So I made sure that I put them together with the peaks so that I have a right and a left side. So I have my through holes up there. Those are ventilation holes. So the top of this is a birdhouse, and we have so many chickadees around here, and they have used every nesting box that is the right size for them. So this is for the floor. Uh, now I need for the roosting box down here, which is so much smaller than the one the Audubon Society had. I need four, I need three, quarter inch dowels. So the dowels have to be very accurate because you're going to marry these two pieces together and you want the dowels to fit and they don't go all the way through. So that's at two and a quarter. Transfer that line over to this one. And that is in two and a quarter. So I'm going to go ahead and set my tri-square at two and a quarter. And I'm going to set my awl right in that hole, give it a little starter hole. Come over here on the knife line at two and a quarter. And give this a hole. So I don't lose the mark. And I'll repeat that on the other holes. This is what I was taught in shop class, drafting back in middle school, called it junior high then. You set your pencil or your knife, in this case, in the line, and then bring your lure up to it. And this is something I didn't do on my other nesting box. Put the door, the floor inside. Uh, the reason you want to put the floor inside is so that when the rain comes down the sides, it doesn't rot the bottom out. So let's drill these holes. So to avoid blowout on these holes, and blowout is when you drill a hole without any backer on the other side, sometimes the drill bit literally blows out the wood on the other side. So I've added a scrap here, and these are the cutoffs from actually cutting this. I'll press really hard on this board, put my drill bit in the starter hole, and hopefully when I turn this over to show you, there's no blowout. Nice clean hole. Sometimes to get a better start on this side, you can reverse the drill. And just like the Shampoo says, rinse and repeat. So it's time for some assembly. This is the front of the back. And since I'm going to be kind of doing this blindly, what I've done here is it comes up the, the bottom starts an inch and a half from the bottom of the back. So I've put a little block here, 
because if you don't get these accurate and make sure you've got the dowel pointing into the inside if you don't get these accurate then the roof's not going to fit and the floor's not going to fit this one does not get glued on yet it has to put the floor on but i do want to support this other side while it gets glued as you can see here on the other side i've pre-drilled and i've set the screws on this side so I'm using tight bond three since this is an outdoor project now I can set this here and align it with that bottom stop block. Use this one for support. And I'm only putting three screws in here. This, the screws are just basically a clamping mechanism. I prefer to use screws. If one of these boards rots or, I don't know, something happens to it, I can take the screws out and rip it down. Whereas if you use nails, Especially finishing nails, very, very difficult. And here is why I like to use screws. I have put the board on backwards. Hmm. Crazy, Larry. Well, not much harm done, except now that the front has glue on it. I wish one of you had mentioned it as I was doing it, that it was going on backwards. Oh well. This one has holes in it as well, but I don't think the birds are going to mind. Let's see if we can get this right this time. A little more glue. Got it right this time. You know, no matter how big your workbench is, it's never big enough. We're almost there. I need a couple of nails here for the door. That's The nails are going to be hinges. This one is 19 and 5 eighths inches high from the bottom and it's 3 eighths of an inch in. So that's going to put it right here. And that is a 16th inch hole. The one on the bottom here is also 3 eighths of an inch in and 5 eighths of an inch up. So that puts it right there. So it's time to add the roof. The roof has a 15 degree pitch on the back here. I'm going to center it up. Now I have a Another smaller drill bit, smaller than the nail. He calls for a seven penny nail. I'm not sure how big a seven penny nail is. This I think is a six penny and I think it'll work. But what I need to do is make sure this front here is where I want it and then go through that 16th inch hole and mark where these nails will go. Well, that was easy for you. Leave this a little proud because I need to take it out, hey? Hey, <laughs> it works. And it does. So, Paul, I hope this is a pretty good rendition of what you had in mind. I tried to be faithful to your plans. Now, this instrument eighth hole here 
that's the size for a chickadee. I'm not sure chickadees will go in here because they, again, prefer to have smaller spaces, is my understanding. But I'm going to leave it an inch and an eighth this year. At least they have a place to house. There it is. Paul, I hope I did you proud. Nice instructions. This year I have my trail cam so I can see if anything's going in and out on those cold nights. And if you ring that bell, you'll be sure to get any notices. Thanks for watching.